Hello, welcome to my second semester vlog journal video where I'm going to talk about um, 2018, sort of come along behind the scenes, join me uh, sort of from the director's chair. Let's start off with text context. Um, when I started this project I was sort of interested in why we'd been given these sort of classic old texts. My dad had always said that he thought all love films were Romeo and Juliet. So I was interested in how far you could stretch that idea, but just stretch it even further and say that all stories are Romeo and Juliet, or everything is Romeo and Juliet. I was also at the time interested in video essays, this new thing on YouTube where a sort of intellectual American will talk about um, the story arc of The Shining. I also like the sort of intellectual sounding stuff like when Reggie Watts did that TED talk. The future states that there is no time other than the collapsation of that sensation of the mirror of the memories in which we are living. So it sounded like it was intelligent instead of actually being intelligent. I like that sort of stuff. I, want, I just wanted to make a video essay that wasn't at all intelligent. Me just going to be rambling incoherently, slurring words and basically sounding like I had no idea what I was saying. And then I'd just be like labelling things in the films as what they are in my head. And then to do that whole labelling thing, I sort of just used words above their heads which I got worried about because it's kind of the same aesthetic that a lot of memes use you've got the simple text um, labelling like a big issue and then putting it on a small meme image it's annoying because that whole thing sort of just been nicked from shit political cartoons it would just be trying to summarise like the world so I basically try to do the same thing like a dumb meme video I think it's quite funny, it sort of does that job sort of well, um, but I don't like that it's relying on that sort of meme text thing, I kind of want a better way of doing that but I don't really know how to, so I'm conflicted. Next up you've got the Dada project, for this I just wanted to crack out something really quickly and forget about it, I had three initial ideas, the first was that I was just going to go on a YouTube random video generator, download every video I got on and then put them over each other on After Effects with like different layers but it didn't look that good in the end. The second idea was similar, it was to get a bunch of sort of Windows um, XP tutorials because you could key out the blue you could basically make it look like there were like 40 screens on top of each other with a bunch of dudes all explaining over the top so it made no sense which was pretty da da I thought but I didn't really like those two what I ended up making was a um, sort of conspiracy theory video I like how in conspiracy theory videos they just sort of connect a whole range of things that don't really make sense they just pull dates and facts and figures and try and make it look like all these things are connected that aren't. Um, so I wanted to try and push that by just making a ridiculous 9-11 conspiracy video which just ropes in like all the sort of established conspiracy imagery. Um, so I think it sort of did, did the right job. Um, I just wish I'd used funnier things than the normal conspiracy stuff because that's all quite established if I started um, mixing in new imagery and ideas I think it would be a lot more f interesting so for the personal project um, I basically wanted to continue doing this project I'd already been working on with my friends Stan and Alfie we had this idea of sort of making like an animated show it was going to be sort of like a surreal dark comedy with us three as the main characters with a, with an idea for the plot being that things would just progressively get 
more and more ridiculous, more and more big, more and more dark as the episode went on. Sort of heavily inspired by things like Saviour, Renegade Angel. There's super good writing, but sort of nonsensical stories. We came up with ideas for stories quite quickly. Me and Alfie just, in the, in the space of like half an hour, came up with the idea for the first episode, which was, we need to find a baby, we get bored looking, we don't want to have sex with each other, so we make female versions of ourselves. They don't find us attractive. We get them to have a baby with someone else. That baby turns out to be an adult version of us. One of us falls in love with that person um, and has sex with it, which creates a baby, and then that's us getting a baby. The rest of the writing process was filling it with weird wordplay. So I wrote the first draft, Alfie wrote the second, and we just kept on rotating it. Once we'd done a finished script, we began the process of trying to come up with visuals. To animate this, we wanted something sort of original. We wanted our filmed faces, but with the flexibility of doing actual animation. Um, we had two filming sessions where we sat in front of a green screen, uh, put this blue trouser thing around our necks and did all the lines. Uh, I then put two ultra keys on this footage to mask out everything but the faces. The general animation process was I would animate a test or, or something, export it as soon as it was done and send it to the group chat. Alfie and Stan would say yay or nay and then I'd make another animation. I like this method because it got visuals done quickly. This bit was pretty difficult. Um, it became pretty obvious that just smashing together any sort of collaged objects and saying it had a shitty aesthetic wasn't really going to work. We were very conscious of how easy that could look like the sort of deliberately bad side of meme humour. Even the people that made sort of aesthetically shitty work like Tim and Eric still were sort of satirising a specific thing so it still looked consistent and coherent. So we did actually want to start considering colour, composition and style. And if it was to look wrong in any way, we only wanted it to look wrong sort of quite subtly. The clock on the wall, if it's ticking, should only tick a little bit faster than normal. It shouldn't be like going mad like on a kid's TV show. Another issue was trying to avoid it looking like any of our own set styles. Um, I didn't want it to solely look like my work, you know, like mostly shit looking. Um, but I also didn't want it to look just like Alfie's work, which is most, mostly like beige and black and white. And reaching middle ground aesthetically was a challenge that I sort of enjoyed. It's definitely difficult achieving something visually nice looking when you've got three people involved. But I think we all got better at compromising and listening to each other's advice and also just sort of trusting that what will come out at the end will be good. What we ended up with was sort of like three minutes of the first episode, which isn't that much, but did take all of my free time. And we're just going to keep on doing it over summer, which is nice. Other stuff that's sort of relevant is my drawing. In my own sort of drawing stuff, which is annoyingly separate from the rest of my work, I've basically just been drawing stuff for people's birthdays because it's like a quick deadline uh, and you can see the joy that you bring to people in the in the faces when it's their their birthday and then with those drawings I've been uh, coloring them in so I've been scanning them and then coloring them in on Photoshop to try and get better at color and I think some of them look decent for Manifesto, I just didn't know where to begin, so for a while I didn't. I came up with an idea last week uh, after finding this guy on Fiverr.com that said he will mediate any conflict. I liked the boldness of that statement. I thought the guy behind it seemed pretty interesting. Um, I wanted to pose a bunch of different conflicts at him and see how he dealt with it. So we had this 40-minute conversation, which wasn't really that interesting, but there were some bits that were quite funny in it. I think the whole thing needed to be a bit more planned. Uh, me relying on actual real-time wit isn't a good way of working. I edited that chat into like a 10 minute interview format which was sort of more funny. Took from this sort of 12 main points that he said uh, and that's my manifesto but it's, it's not it's not great. I don't know where to go from here. Um, this is pretty uncharted territory, me interacting with strangers for work. 
we did actually film a 40 minute conversation with me and Ed, my housemate Ed, talking about uh, my issues with him, all made up. It was actually quite funny, more funny than before, uh, so I'll try and edit that into something. For the Raps and Rhymes project, I basically picked a kid's poem that seemed to sort of relate to mine, and then made a sort of video gamey looking corridor where you got sent to different colour rooms. But apparently the kid that got that and did that poem didn't like it and said it didn't relate to their poem, so you can probably mark me down for that one. What I've learnt this second year, uh, things aren't that funny if the person doing it knows it's funny. I've got to spend more time thinking about what I'm trying to say with my videos, and if I'm not trying to say anything, I need to at least know that. I've got to do more research on what I'm referencing and try to satirise that more.